Have you ever wondered how the earliest humans expressed their artistic inclinations? Our journey through art begins with the first known form of human creativity, cave paintings. These artistic expressions started appearing on cave walls around 40,000 years ago, offering a glimpse into our ancestors' lives and thoughts. One of the most renowned sites of cave art is the Lascaux Caves in France. This labyrinth of caves, discovered in the 20th century, is a treasure trove of over 600 paintings. These paintings, created with natural pigments and rudimentary tools, depict a variety of subjects from animals to abstract symbols narrating tales from a time long past. The Lascaux Caves are a testament to the innate human desire to express and communicate, to share our experiences and emotions. They are the earliest known evidence of storytelling, a practice that has evolved and endured throughout human history. These ancient artworks mark the beginning of human creativity, setting the stage for the evolution of art. From the caves we move to the sophisticated civilization of ancient Egypt. Here art was not merely an aesthetic pursuit but a form of communication with hieroglyphics playing a central role. This intricate system of symbols was used to record everything from royal decrees to religious rituals making it a vital link to the past. Yet for centuries the meaning of these symbols remained a mystery. It was the discovery of the Rosetta Stone in the late 18th century that finally provided the key to decoding this ancient script. This stone slab bore the same text in three scripts, including Greek, which scholars could read. Through careful comparison of the text, they were able to decipher the hieroglyphics, unlocking a treasure trove of knowledge about ancient Egypt. Egyptian art, with its unique style and symbolism, left a lasting imprint on the world. It's a testament to the power of art to transcend time and culture, speaking to us across the millennia. As we cross the Mediterranean, we encounter a revolution in artistic expression. This is where we meet the Greeks who introduced the concept of realism in art. Unlike their predecessors who focused on idealized, almost formulaic depictions, the Greeks strove for a more true-to-life representation. They observed the world around them and aimed to capture it as accurately as possible. Imagine the sheer skill it took to create the Venus de Milo, a sculpture so lifelike you can almost feel her soft skin and flowing robes. Or the Parthenon friezes, where the horses seem to leap off the stone, their muscles straining in exertion. The Greeks' mastery of realism wasn't just about technical skill, it was also about capturing emotion, movement and the beauty of the human form. Greek art, with its focus on realism and beauty, set the standard for centuries to come. It's a testament to their skill that we're still talking about these works thousands of years later. Fast forward to the 15th century where art witnessed a rebirth in Italy. The period known as the Renaissance, a word meaning rebirth, ushered in an era of renewed interest in ancient Greek and Roman culture. This cultural resurgence had a profound impact on art, leading to breakthroughs in techniques and themes that continue to influence artists today. The Italian Renaissance was a hotbed of artistic innovation, with advancements in painting, sculpture and architecture, but one of the most significant developments was the use of perspective. This technique, which gives a two-dimensional image the illusion of depth, was not a new concept, but it was during the Renaissance that artists began to master it. Perspective transformed art, allowing artists to create more realistic depictions of the world around them. It was like they had discovered a new language, a way to communicate depth and distance that had been lacking in art until then. Two artists who were instrumental in this revolution were Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. Leonardo, best known for his painting of the Mona Lisa, was a master of perspective. His works are renowned for their incredible attention to detail and realism, a testament to his understanding of perspective. Michelangelo, on the other hand, was a sculptor, painter and architect. His most famous works include the Statue of David and the Sistine Chapel ceiling. Michelangelo's use of perspective in his paintings shows a keen understanding of spatial relationships, creating a sense of depth and realism that was groundbreaking for the time. The Renaissance period, with its focus on humanism and perspective, forever changed the way we perceive art. It was a time of exploration and discovery of pushing boundaries and challenging norms. And it was during this period that artists began to see the world from a new perspective, a perspective that has shaped the course of art history ever since. As we move north, we enter a period of artistic prosperity in the Netherlands. 
This era, known as the Dutch Golden Age, was a time of incredible wealth and cultural achievement, particularly in the realm of art. In the 17th century, the Netherlands was a thriving center for trade, science and art, and it was during this period that artists began to experiment with the delicate interplay of light and shadow. In this age, the Dutch artists, in their quest for realism, developed a technique called chiaroscuro, an Italian term meaning light-dark. Chiaroscuro was a groundbreaking technique that involved the use of strong contrasts between light and dark areas to create depth and volume in two-dimensional spaces. This technique was a game-changer, and it helped to create a sense of three-dimensionality and drama in paintings. Among the artists who mastered this technique were Johannes Vermeer and Rembrandt van Rijn. Vermeer, known for his detailed domestic interior scenes, was a master of light. He had an uncanny ability to capture the subtlest shifts in light and color, creating a sense of calm and tranquility in his paintings. His works, such as The Milkmaid and Girl with a Pearl Earring, are excellent examples of his mastery of light. On the other hand, Rembrandt, one of the greatest artists in European history, was known for his innovative use of light and shadow. His self-portraits and biblical scenes often depicted dramatic contrasts of light and shadow, which added depth and emotion to his work. His painting, The Night Watch, is considered a masterpiece of chiaroscuro. The Dutch Golden Age was a period of incredible artistic innovation and exploration. The artists of this era pushed the boundaries of what was possible in painting, and in doing so, they forever changed the course of art history. The Dutch Golden Age, with its dramatic use of light and shadow, added depth and emotion to art. As we enter the 20th century, we see artists breaking boundaries like never before. An era of revolution, the 20th century shook the world of art to its core, birthing movements that shattered conventional norms and breathed life into new and exciting forms of expression. Impressionism, a movement that originated in France, sought to capture the fleeting impressions of light and color. The Impressionists, including artists such as Monet and Renoir, painted on plein air or outdoors to capture the subtle nuances of nature's light. They broke free from the confines of the studio, bringing art into the world and inviting the world into their art. Then came Cubism, a style pioneered by Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque. Cubism sought to deconstruct the world, breaking it down into geometric shapes and reassembling it from multiple perspectives. Picasso, with his abstract forms and fragmented figures, challenged the traditional notion of representation, pushing the boundaries of how we perceive reality. As we delve deeper into the 20th century, we encounter surrealism, a movement that sought to unlock the hidden depths of the subconscious mind. Artists such as Salvador Dali and René Magritte created dreamlike, often unsettling images that blurred the lines between reality and fantasy. Dali's melting clocks and Magritte's floating apples captured the uncanny, the bizarre and the inexplicable, introducing viewers to a world beyond the realm of the ordinary. And then, of course, there was the explosive energy of Jackson Pollock's abstract expressionism. Pollock's art was a storm of color and movement where the act of painting became a performance and the canvas a record of that performance. His work was a protest against the constraints of traditional painting, a declaration of the freedom and spontaneity of the artist. Modern art, with its variety and experimentation, continues to redefine what we consider art. From the dappled light of Impressionism to the fractured forms of Cubism, from the dreamscapes of Surrealism to the wild energy of Abstract Expressionism, 20th century art was a whirlwind of innovation and exploration, a testament to the limitless possibilities of human creativity. Finally, we arrive at contemporary art where the possibilities are endless. This dazzling era presents a kaleidoscope of styles, mediums and themes where conventions are bent and norms are defied. It's a playground for creativity where artists like Banksy have turned the streets into their canvas, cloaking social commentary in mystery and satire. Meanwhile, artists like Ai Weiwei are testing the boundaries of what art can be, from installations that span entire landscapes to a simple gesture that speaks volumes about political dissent. Here, art is not confined to galleries, it breathes life into every nook and cranny of our world, reflecting the times we live in, the challenges we face, and the dreams we nurture. Art has evolved from cave walls to sprawling cityscapes, continually reinventing itself. In this ever-evolving world of art, who knows what the future holds, but one thing's for sure, art will always find a way to express the human spirit.